the memorandum of understanding mou system recommended by adjuns and gupta committee report was started as a test pilot for a couple of industries as an instrument it was introduced in the test phase in 1987-88 based on the french system of performance contracts as we have earlier said there were two types of contracting system available at that time there were the french contracting system type and the other was a signaling system so india initially adopted the french system of performance contracting and a year later we switched to the signaling system and now it has been refined into a balanced scorecard approach the system was introduced on the concept of management by objectives to give greater autonomy to managers in the public sector and simultaneously make them more accountable for the performance of the enterprise in its most basic form the mou system is a system of management audit in a meeting held in december 1985 a group of ministers decided to introduce the system of mou in the cps in 1986 it was finally introduced though there is no legal framework supporting the introduction of mou system for public enterprises but this meeting by the group of ministers and their decision gives a solid backing to this system and its implementation in public enterprises the system of mou was aimed at affording greater greater autonomy to public enterprises from government control along with the increased autonomy for managers there was a corresponding increase in accountability as well where the government would continue to have control over the enterprises through supervision by target setting at the beginning of each year through performance evaluation system initially four cpsas signed the mou in the year of its introduction in 1987-88 and 11 in the following year the mou in the year 1988 contained static operational efficiency the efficiency in the use of resources at its disposal dispos, disposal at a given point of time the 1989-90 mous changed dramatically the mous included dynamic efficiency indicators these indicators included corporate planning human resource development marketing etc the importance of mou system gained significantly after the introduction of the new industrial policy of 1991 where a specific mention was made for the introduction for a system of performance contracting or mou in public enterprises for enhancing their efficiency it was decided to bring more cpscs or public enterprises under the ambit of mou system the importance of mou system gained more after the introduction of the new industrial policy of 1991 and it was decided that more public enterprises would be brought under the ambit of the mou system the next major set of changes came to the system after the committee report in 2004 by ncaer this prompted the issuance of new guidelines and saw the introduction of enterprise specific and sector specific parameters and also a change in the weightages for the parameters the changes introduced by the ncaer report are discussed in detail at a later stage the guidelines which were issued following the ncaer committee report were in vogue till 2009-10 the mou guidelines of 2010-11 which took into account the recommendations of another important committee called ashok chandra committee report had aspects like corporate social planning research and development and sustainable development here we would like to highlight how this mou system kept growing and enriching itself from where it started that was arjun singh gupta committee report and there were some additions made by ashok chandra committee report and the parameters and indicators widened in the course of time the evolution of the mou system in india can be traced through such important committees and reports which were have refined 
fine tune the system at regular intervals of time. The committee reports took into account the environment in which the public sector enterprises, both external and internal environment in which the public sector were operating. Some of the important committee reports which were which contributed to the changes in evolution of MOU system have been indicated. First was the Arjun Singh Gupta Committee Report in 1984. The second was the study on the revamping of MOU system by NCAER in 2004. Third was the report of the Working Group on the Review of MOU Guidelines in CPEs, Government of India and DPE in 2008. The fourth was the report of panel of experts of reforms in central public sector enterprises. The fifth was the report of committee on MOU system in 2012. So these are the five important reports which contributed to the growth and evolution of MOU system in India. We have already seen how Arjun Singh Gupta committee highlighted on the problems of public enterprises and the recommendations given by the committee. Now let us look at the NCAER report and what it highlighted. For the first time in this report, importance was given to the productivity of PSEs and not just the finance, financial aspects alone. Greater weightage was assigned to dynamic factors like quality, research and development, customer satisfaction as a, as a measure of performance of public enterprises. Focus was also laid on the functioning of MOU system in India and more specifically on the challenges faced in the implementation of the system. The study uses various methods to assess and evaluate the effectiveness of MOU system and made suitable recommendations for the improvement. Several important tools like total factor productivity analysis, TFP analysis were also incorporated in the report suggestion was made for incorporating these tools. This study also identified problems faced by public enterprises in India at that point of time. The study while reiterating most of the uh, concepts of what public sectors played in India which was highlighted by Arjun Sen Gupta committee also identified the serious problems which hindered the performance of public sector enterprises including the dysfunctional relationship between public sector prices and the government, lack of clarity and expectation from enterprises as such, multiplicity of goals leading to confusion among managers with regard to profit objectives, lack of proper methods of accountability and evaluation. Government interference in operations of the CPSCs or the public enterprises was prevalent as the enterprises were regarded as subordinate departments rather than corporate bodies, which led to this dysfunctional relationship as per the NCER report. All the information and expertise that was available with the managers in the enterprise did not match with the government expertise as the government did not have the tools or expertise to evaluate the performance of the enterprise. Further, the study also highlights the need for the MOU system and the information asymmetry in between the enterprise and the government. The report highlighted that the managers of the enterprises at any given point of time have, have more information about the enterprise rather than the government and thus it doesn't give a level playing field between these two agencies for any system to move effectively forward. The committee recommended having equal weightages to financial and non-financial parameters as a first step that the enterprises took towards improving non, not only the financial aspects but also sustainable development through improved productivity. Now let us look at the next report of the working group on the review of MOU guidelines which was set up in 2008. The other committee that was set up to review the implementation of MOU system in India was called the Re Working Group on Review of MOU Guidelines in CPSCs and it was established in the year 2008 under the chairmanship of Sri Ashok Chandra. This report was of vital importance in the context of MOU in India. The report emphasized 
the importance of public sector which grew from just five enterprises with combined investment of 29 crores in the first five-year plan to 217 operating CPSCs with a total investment of more than 40,000 crores. The main scope of the working group was the improving of the new methodology of performance evaluation adopted by Department of Public Enterprises in 2004-2005. This report highlighted the following aspects. Determination of basic targets and the difference between different grades on a 5-point rating scale. Reviewing the balance scorecard approach of giving equal weightages to financial and non-financial parameters. Distinguishing the performance of large and small firms to size related criteria or parameters. Review the criteria for performance evaluation. Review of the syndicates of task force under the MOU system. Develop appropriate mechanisms for reflecting targets and performance of subsidiaries and joint ventures in the targets and performance of the holding companies. And the main areas where it felt there was need for improvement was in the target setting process, which is a very important process, and the determination of weightages of different types of parameters criterion. There was another panel, another report, expert panel that was set up on reforms in central public enterprises in the year 2011. This committee also looked into the functioning of the MOU system and made some recommendations. Some of them are as follows. While recommend, recommending the continuation of the MOU system for public enterprises, the committee felt that some basic changes had to be made to the system to make them more effective as a system that was operating till then was formulated when the public enterprises were operating in a regulated environment. The committee felt that the MOU system would have to go beyond just performance evaluation tool and would have to transcend into an instrument which would give the enterprise a direction to their business and business processes. The MOU would have to account for diversification, acquisition, formation of joint ventures, new strategic businesses, usage of information communication technology, R&D initiatives, HR development, organizational changes, etc as the enterprises approach these processes to stay competitive in the market. The report also recommended MOUs to be delinked from the performance related P PRP system. Benchmarking with industrial parameters including the private sector for physical parameters was also recommended by this particular committee. The report highlighted on certain issues. The first and foremost issue which the report highlighted was the format of MOU. The report suggested that the system of multiple formats in the MOU system was to be replaced by a uniform MOU format system where across the board enterprises would have a uniform format through which they would enter the information. But the enterprises would have flexibility to look into their specific needs. The report also talked about the target setting process. Basic targets and differences in rating should be the discretion of the task force. DP should also bring out glossary and definitions of financial and accounting terms used in MOU documents. As far as the non-financial targets, the parameters as per the report should be divided into corporate social responsibility, sustainable development, R&D, technology, quality, innovation, etc. The committee was satisfied with the guidelines being issued by the DP and felt that it was very comprehensive. But the report also pointed out that the guidelines would have to be revised against the committee recommendations from time to time. During this period, there was another system called the results framework document that was introduced by the government of India. Under the cabinet secretariat, a performance management division was created and this system, this department was supposed to manage the performance of 
all the government departments, central government departments through this tool called RFD, Results Framework Document. So this committee recommended the integration of two systems. The MOU system was particularly looking at the performance management in public enterprises, while the result framework document, which was a comprehensive view of performance management in government, central government departments, was also separately existing. So this rec report recommended the merging or the synchronization between these two reports, be between MOU and RFD system. Now let us look at where the current uh, MOU system uh, looks like. Recently, there have number of changes that have been brought out in the MOU system. Uh, the MOU system till date was a paper-based system. It was kind of an agreement between the public enterprise and the respective administrative ministry. It was a document signed by the CEO of the enterprise and the respective Secretary of the Administrative Ministry, there were certain parameters identified, both financial and non-financial parameters were identified and performance, agreed performance parameters were also established. So this was a written document. Currently, there is a new system which has come into work. This is called the online MOU system. From the paper-based system, we have slowly moved into an online system of MOU where all the information from the public enterprises is being fed on this online system of MOU. Also significantly, the number of enterprises that have signed the MOU have dramatically changed. In the year 1987-88, there were only five enterprises that were, that were four or five enterprises that were signing the MOU. But now, all the central public enterprises, more than 290 enterprises are signing the MOU with the government. There is a specific institutional mechanism available for monitoring the performance of MOU of enterprises. After the MOU is signed between the enterprise and the government, there is an institutional mechanism for monitoring the MOU. There is a high-powered committee, this is the apex committee which monitors the MOU and it's a committee of secretaries. The HPC is charged with assessing the performance of MOU signing enterprises against the targets set in the MOU. Along with this, the HPC also looked, looks at how far the administrative ministries or the government has succeeded in keeping their commitment towards this MOU because MOU is a document where both the agencies, both the public enterprise as well as the government sign and agree to deliver certain things. So the HPC looks at both the enterprise performance as well as the commitment from the administrative ministries on how much they have supported the enterprise to deliver the objective. This committee is headed by the cabinet secretary. The member secretary of the committee is the secretary DP, Department of Public Enterprises. There is an ad hoc task force which is a very, very crucial institution which supports the implementation of MOU. The task force is responsible with tar finalizing the target setting process and assigning weightages to the parameters along with evaluation finalizing the evaluation methodology and also evaluating the performance of CPEs. The members of the task force include ex-civil servants, ex-chief executives of the public enterprises, academics, professionals, uh, chartered accountants, etc. The task force has syndicates, subgroups or syndicates, which work on specific sectors. At present, we have around 13 syndicates operating. The target setting process is a very crucial process in the system of MOU because the process of target setting, this is the, the soul of MOU. The process of target setting and evaluation begins with the Department of Public Enterprises releasing the MOU guidelines. At the beginning of the year, the during October-November month, Department of Public Enterprises releases the guidelines of MOU. Based on this, enterprises have to work on their MOU. The draft MOUs are prepared by the enterprises 
on the basis of guidelines issued by DP and submitted to their respective administrative ministries. Then these draft MOUs are examined by the division of MOU in Department of Public Enterprises and subsequent circulation. There are critiques made and they are circulated back. Then MOU negotiations are scheduled. In these negotiations, which are held usually in January, February, these negotiation meetings are attended by the ad hoc task force and the enterprises in the presence of DP and the draft MOUs are discussed. And these are finalized and submitted back to the DP to be vetted by them. All MOUs are usually signed before 31st March of every year. This is generally the MOU cycle. The MOU document usually has following components. It has the preliminary component of vision, mission statement, objectives of the enterprise, functions of the enterprise. Then there is a section which talks about the indicators, both the financial indicators and the non-financial indicators. Then there is a section on the commitments from the government and there is a signatures from both the enterprise head as well as the government head. Let us look at some of the uh, financial targets uh, selected by the enterprises from time to time. Let us look at how the targets are set and what kind of targets are present in the MOU. There are financial targets and the non-financial targets. As far as the targets, financial targets are concerned, they should be realistic, growth oriented and aspirational. It's also expected that the financial targets must be at the same time consistent with the budget provi provisions for that respective year and con conformity with the planning commission and finance commission and the administrative ministry requirements. The basic targets are to be arrived at based on the combination of performance of the enterprise over the past five succeeding years and other factors such as capacity and its expansion, business environment, projects under implementation, government policies, external factors, companies, growth forecast, etc. Another important factor to be considered for the basic financial target is the national international benchmarking. Benchmarking is a very important aspect of MOU formulation. Benchmarking is not applicable for all enterprises, so it is to be considered for enterprises which is for which it is applicable. Non-financial and dynamic targets are also a very important part of the MOU because it is based on the balanced scorecard approach. Non-financial targets in MOU should be broadly in the following categories, sector specific, enterprise specific targets, initiatives for growth, capacity addition, project management and implementation, corporate social responsibility and sustainable development, research and development, human resource management and risk management. Grading on MOU system is a very important thing. The MOU system when it was first introduced was based on, based on the French contracting system. As we all know, it was later changed to the signaling system. It was further refined to the balance scorecard approach. The performance of the enterprise in the MOU system is based is graded on a five point rating scale, which is based on the MOU composite score. So excellent, very good, good, fair and poor. These are the five points on which the enterprises are rated. So till now we have seen uh, broadly how this MOU system works. Uh, initially, the MOU system in India was based on the French pattern of contracting system. Later on, we moved into the signaling uh, pattern of uh, contracting system. The MOU document basically consists of uh, the a vision mission documents, vision mission objectives and functions of an enterprise and all the financial and non-financial targets are spelt out in detail in the MOU document resulting in a signature between the CEO of the public enterprise as well as the administrative ministry. And at the end of the year, this MOU, param MOU document is reviewed and the performance of public enterprise is reviewed based on the pre-agreed targets and relative incentives 
are paid through the PRP system. So here we will end the session on MOU system, its evolution and growth in India.